Hey YouTube, well it has been a little while, uh, but we're doing another range hood and I thought well I'll may as well bring you guys along for the ride too and maybe it'll help somebody out. So uh, the one we're doing, it's, it's reasonably straightforward, I'll, I'll put a, a picture in here of what the designer, I guess, concept. And uh, um, let's see, and then I, I worked on a storyboard, I finally got the, the design laid out. So I'll show you my storyboard. So the most important thing you have to do is to get your actual appliance that's going up inside, the blower unit. And that's down here. And the reason you want to do that before you even start the, the cabinet is because you can't rely on the specs. I've done several uh, range hoods lately relying on the specs and uh, the, the blower unit has not fit. So then you're on the job trying to cut and, and cut and paste and make things work and that's, that's never a good thing. Uh, so anyway, I've, I've, I started telling the customers that we have to have the range hood, the blower unit, before we can uh, build the, the, the cabinet. So that's where we are. So first thing you need is your blower unit. So you just decide on, on the size that you want the thing to be and then you get your blower unit. Uh, obviously it's got to be smaller than that because you need uh, uh, room for your materials. Uh, but you need your blower unit before you start the cabinet. Now uh, this one is going between boxes. Um, so there's, uh, it's, it's nice and tight you've got the structure of the cabinets on either side that it's going to attach to so it doesn't have to be overly strong so I'm building this one out of half inch material and then I'm going to apply some quarter inch trim on top of that and uh, you'll kind of see what's going on with the picture that I sent you a little while ago and then as we progress here so my overall is 36 our cabinets are 45 tall and the, the designer uh, decided she wanted to be uh, 32 inches above the cooktop so I ended up with about a 31 inch sorry I'm kinda of sweating here uh, ended up with a 31 inch tall range hood cabinet uh, it's going to have an arch on the bottom so that's gonna bring the blower unit up a little bit and I haven't actually done the arch yet so I'm not quite sure how tall how high the the blower units coming up but uh, let me show you my layout here uh, I call it a storyboard, you know, the same as uh, old school used to have a story stick. I do a storyboard, and so just to give you a, a quick outline, I'm going to kind of swing you around and hopefully try and show you what I'm doing here. Okay, 36 wide overall, and because of my arch that's going down here, I need a fair bit of material in here because I've got a, a frame here and a frame here, and I need some space in between. So I'm doing a 10 inch, whatever you call it, apron skirt, um, however you want to describe it. And then okay, down here on the bottom, let's see, I've got my, my back. So this is going to be the wall. I've got a half inch of material on the back. And then I'm coming in another inch. And the reason for that is we don't know what they're going to have down here for backsplash material. And um, so then my range hood is going to start with the actual, the actual blower is going to start off of that inch and a half and then I'll come in from there. So that's what I'm doing now is laying out the, the depth of my hood. Okay, and I'll just take these filters out so I don't have to worry about them. This is going to have to be up around my 10 inch, around the top of the, the skirt thing that I told you about. And if I do that, then I am literally taking my mark off of this. Because if I don't measure, if I actually pull off of the appliance, then I'm not, I can't measure wrong. So take my do my takeoffs from the actual appliance. I'll do a, a height of my unit too, just so I've got it. Okay. So the height of my appliance is six and an eight, so we're gonna call it six and a quarter. So I'm just gonna jot down that down here. And 
So if I go to, I'm, I'm going to back it up to 18 even, and that gives me a 16th inch of clearance. Okay, so if I do it to 18, and then I've got a half inch of material, so my overall cabinet is 20 inches deep. apron is 10. So I'll pull my apron height across. And I, I always put my drawings back to back, uh, so front and side, so that I can pull my dimensions across and uh, I always know my dimensions are the same on, on both the side and the front. Now the one thing you need to be careful when you're if you're cutting angles is sometimes on these your um, your side and your front will be at different slopes. The side of your hood and the front of your hood are on different slopes and so you really need to be careful of your angles. When you do that you're almost better to, to make your height a little wild and then uh, come back and trim it all off later because you're when you cut these out um, because of the different slope on your your panels you're going to end up at different heights on top your lengths will change so uh, uh, it's it's a real pain to try and figure it out I'm not a math guy and same thing I like it on a, a storyboard and it doesn't lay out right on a storyboard either so uh, really just build your sides long, your, your front panel and your sides, build them long. Go ahead and assemble all that and then cut off your height. And usually your tops can be covered with some kind of trim or a crown molding or you'll have some, uh, some batten on the hood. So even if your top isn't quite straight, it usually doesn't matter. So I've got a wee problem in that the... Uh, designer wants the crown molding to pass past the cabinets uh, so that she wants a one piece crown molding across the cabinets and across the, the uh, range hood so to do that because the front of the range hood is sloped I have to actually drop the top uh, drop the slope a little bit so I've got a straight edge for the crown to, to mount to and um, so what I'm going to do is this straight one inch on top I'm gonna to actually make that probably two inches tall so I'll end up at, at probably 32 inches and then the crown will just run behind and the piece of trim that's going on the front uh, I think it's one and a half inch they're gonna adjust this box up and down to line this up with the top of the doors because I don't know how much face frame there is some so a lot of the cabinets these guys are using are full overlay doors so there's no no face frame on top for the crown so in that case the box will have to slide all the way up and uh, I'll end up just a tad shorter than she wanted it originally but there's nothing or you know a tad higher off the range hood but there's nothing I can do about that because I have no idea what the cabinets are going to be so and then this way if they do have a face frame they can bring it down a little bit and line this up with the top of the doors and they've got material up on top to, uh, to mount the crown mold to so that's kind of my plan Okay, so uh, let's see. Because I've got a, an overlay on top, I'm going to make the front panel fit inside the side panel. So this, this is my half inch side material, and then my overlay is going to trim out that half inch panel. And uh, yeah, so that's the front, and then here on the side, okay, now because Sorry, because I don't know how deep the backsplash is, I'm starting with my half inch material, so my, my wall, then my half inch material, and then I'm adding an inch just in case. Uh, this decorator sometimes uses uh, countertop material as a backsplash. So, what's that? Usually inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths, something like that. So, I add another inch, so I've got a total inch and a half off the back wall, so the blower unit will clear. Uh, the countertop if they decide to do that. 
And the other thing being I don't know quite yet how tall this arch is going to be. I'm not quite sure how high the blower unit needs to go up inside the cabinet. So I've just marked here so I know for sure that uh, even if I have to come up all the way to the top of this with the square part of the blower unit, the angle on the blower unit will still fit inside the cabinet. So I, I can bring it way up inside the cabinet so I'm only hanging down about three inches. Uh, so that'll be fine. And I'll, in, I'll insert, I've obviously edited this a couple times, I'll insert some pictures of the range hood as I'm trying to figure this out. And again, take your measurements off the range hood. Don't take them off specs. And actually set the blower unit on your material and uh, measure. I don't even use a measuring tape. I just draw lines off the actual blower unit so I know exactly what I got. I don't have to worry about screwing up. Okay, so that's our storyboard. So the next thing's going to be to uh, get my cuts lined out. Okay, YouTube. So just a real quick update. So I've got my... Let's see, way back here. I got my side panels cut out and uh, they didn't end up quite the same. So I just uh, nailed them together, little pin nails, nailed them together and ran a flush trimmer out around them. So now my two sides are identical. Okay, and I just wanted to uh, show you that uh, while you're building your, uh, your range hood, to find the different sizes of your panels, um, use a story stick instead of getting a tape measure and trying to calculate everything and figure out what your angles are just get a story stick it makes it so easy and uh, see I took a, a square line off here and these are going inside the panel so I, I don't care if these corners don't line up they're not going to be visible so the fact that this angle is going to be a little longer than this angle doesn't matter keep it simple uh, I don't care about splitting the angle on these when they're buried uh, so just a square line and then cut by cut you can find what this angle is or if you have an angle finder then go for that find your first angle then you can do a pencil mark up here and uh, just gradually whittle down until your story stick is the size you want and then that's the height of your panel and you've got your top and bottom angle okay so then you cut your panel according to your story stick and then you don't have to worry about your angles as long as you do the same thing as the story stick then you know you're good forget about the tape measure you don't even need it unless you just want to confirm which actually I did when I set my story stick up I did a take on both ends and then I just used tape measure to confirm everything uh, but your story stick tells literally tells the story and that's how big your your panel is going to be how wide your panel is You've got your angles and follow your story stick. Ideally, your story stick should be the same thickness, probably even the same material as your panel. Um, but if, if it's not the same thickness, then make sure you flush your surface. Uh, if you bring it up here, it's changing your angles. So make sure you flush up your, your surface on your panel before you actually uh, mark from your story stick and then you're guaranteed to have the right size panel. Okay, so here's most of my parts cut out. We've got two side panels, which again are identical because I uh, use them as a pattern and flush trim them. I've got the lower front, whether you want to call it skirt or apron, and this needs to get cut to size with the arch on the bottom. This is the, the upper front panel. And these are the two uh, back panels that I'll use um, to just build it out. And again, because this is going between cabinets, I don't need really any strength in the box. Uh, it's basically just uh, decor as much as anything. The cabinets on either side will offer structure, and uh, it, it really doesn't need to be all that strong. And then a uh, quarter inch here, and this is what I'm going to build the, the front panel out of okay and as I've mentioned before working with the half inch material I use the the Craig uh, micro pocket hole jig it's for a half inch and thinner material and I have done a review on it don't even bother with the material stops that come with it uh, you're supposed to clip these material stops on it and uh, they're very unreliable they're junk uh, 
So just take them off and flush it up with the end of the material, the edge of the material, and set your, your bit accordingly. And again, this is very thin material, going half inch to half inch if you're uh, doing an angle. If you're doing half inch to half inch, you really don't have much mechanical strength with those screws. So uh, the screw, it basically is to secure it until your glue sets up. So don't assume that the mechanical strength is the same as you have with the inch and a quarter screws because it is, it is not. And something I didn't think to actually mention, uh, make sure when you're laying this stuff out before you drill it that you check and find out what your good side is uh, so that the back side is up and you don't have to worry about drilling the wrong side. I need to apologize, I forgot to film the assembly of the box, but it is literally just that, it's assembling the box, the front panels inlay inside the side panels, and everything's pocket screwed together and make sure you glue it and then the quarter inch trim just lays on the outside uh, on the surface okay so these are a frameless cabinet uh, no not not frameless uh, full overlay door my bad and so there needs to be a place up here for crown molding so I'm guessing I'm guessing the uh, doors are gonna be about a quarter inch below the crown so I've given him something to crown to and that'll end up going above the other cabinets and then he can just adjust the height he can just adjust the height of the hood to line the door line this frame up with the doors of the cabinet uh, and then this obviously all this goes back behind cabinets and the crown mold runs right across uh, the cabinets and this uh, vent hood the arch is what I cut on the laser and all I did was actually cut this bottom panel down here uh, being it was fairly thick material it was taking a long time to cut so originally I was going to cut this whole panel and I decided to cut just this bottom arch to cut down on the burn time and then uh, it's literally just a shell and a couple of panels in the back just to stiffen everything up and I always keep 45 cutoffs and I use them to reinforce corners and then I'll do the same down the bottom once I get all that blocking in for the range hood. So the next thing is to get the range hood up in there and then figure out all that blocking for it. Okay and there it is all blocked. I end up adding eighth inch masonite and quarter inch plywood on both ends and two pieces of half inch on the back so I end up with an inch and a half off the wall for lots of room for a backsplash. And in the front, I left a little space in the front so they can do shims. If they need to shim it off the back or shim it off the front, either way, they can just uh, run a couple shims up there and then screw through the shims. And that'll get it. That's the hood done. I'll see if I can't deliver it this afternoon. Here we are with it installed. Uh, it was put with factory cabinets, so there's no reason you can't combine custom and factory. It turned out really nicely, and the customer is very happy. I hope there's information here that's helpful for you. Hopefully I've uh, showed you some things that you hadn't thought about before. I hope you'll like and subscribe. And uh, I'll put some links in the description down below that might be helpful for you. And also make sure to comment if there's some things that you'd like me to cover in videos. I sure appreciate it guys. You have a great day.